After starting the day off with a rapid, Ted and I paddled long and hard, reaching Big Sand Lake and completing 42 kilometers before the day's end. Tired but satisfied, we found a nice beach to call home for the night. In the days to come, we still had our work cut out for us with over 600 kilometers of rugged wilderness to travel before reaching our end point on the coast of Hudson Bay. Ten o'clock at night, I found when I came in, I was like, "Oh, we don't have a fish," and it turned out I'd just been dragging a, a small pike and didn't even know. But I think I'm just gonna let that go because, uh, you know, we're just gonna, I guess, eat some of the food from our food barrels and set the tent up to try to get to bed quicker because it's already quarter past ten. Crazy. Loving my uh, Garmin Instinct Solar watch here. Um, smart watch I can tell what my heart rate is resting heart rate 53 beats a minute not bad feeling pretty beat man multiple nights with not much sleep and just beast mode every day but I feel good too it's like freaking paradise here look at this just epic we have this massive lake all to ourselves gorgeous campsite gorgeous evening so pretty freaking awesome Wolf tracks. Good. Well, tonight for dinner, we are having Thanksgiving dinner, dehydrated meal that Jim's wife, Tori, made for us. Uh, it's also what we had last night. It's just what I pulled out of the bag, the food barrel. Um, and it was delicious. Man, is it ever a hearty meal. And that's exactly what we need. It's actually really um really good news that they're as big as they are so right on oh. mashed potatoes turkey stuffing cranberries 
There we go. This dinner is really hitting the spot. Good morning. Dragonflies are out. It's a very welcomed addition to the uh, bug roster. It is 7.35. God, we're an hour and a half behind schedule. Uh, we're exhausted. Yeah, it seems to be the theme of our interviews. I woke up at 5. Absolutely no way I was getting up. And we basically ended up sleeping until seven and then slowly packing up in the tent and uh man time is just flying out here uh, beautiful sight looks like uh we might have some some rain on the way today unfortunately we were hoping for another sunny day wishing that we'd charged up our uh solar generator um, when we had the sun yesterday because um, we're down at about 50% now with that um, Yeah uh, Today is going to be another marathon paddling day uh, I don't know how we're going to do the same amount of time As we did but right now yesterday because we have to paddle for about 12 hours Concerns for today are the same as yesterday. Will the wind stay down? On a lake like this, you can get pinned down for multiple days, potentially, with bad weather and big white caps. We have about 80 kilometers left to Big Sand Lake, so we're hoping to bang off another 30 today. Um, yeah, hoping to get into some lake trout. Um, it is called Big Sand Lake, so then maybe there'll be another kind of sandy, eskery type thing we can we can camp on. Um, we are behind this morning by about an hour and a half, but we think that we're about on schedule kilometer wise uh, on this trip. Is that a bald eagle there, Ted? It is. Um, it is called Big Sand Lake, so then maybe there'll be another kind of sandy, eskery type thing we can, we can camp on. Um, we are behind this morning by about an hour and a half, but we think that we're about on schedule kilometer wise uh, on this trip. We're gonna probably take a look at our maps this, uh, this morning, check it out. Oh my God, I keep folding it out and this lake just keeps going. I'm feeling really sore. Hopefully um, uh, my body kind of gets used to the never ending beast the mode ball. work that this trip is and that I stopped being yeah. so broken and sore. But uh, yeah, got, Ted was walking around like he was pissed drunk this morning because he's so tired and sore. Um, yeah, got a good sleep last night. Uh, probably six or seven hours of sleep, but a good deep sleep. And man, is it ever hard to get up. Uh, yeah, it's looking like it's gonna rain. You think so? Usually when you hear the balloons going crazy like that, it means that it's going to rain. So we think we're going to get some rain. Anyways, I'm going to hopefully get the tent down and stuff before the rain comes. Sure kind of looks like it will. But uh, yeah, that's the plan. Morning routine now. Get the tent down, boil water, get packed up, eat something and uh, have a coffee and start paddling. No.
feel like that sun's gonna come out. I'm going to be using this Iridium Go from the satellite phone store.com um, for a couple of things. Jim wants to call his wife, Tori, and uh, so he's going to be able to do that with this unit. You can also email, and uh, we're also going to get a weather report, and because we're on this massive lake, uh, we can predict the wind, which uh, will give us a good little extra... Um, vote of confidence of maybe what what we can see ahead for the next couple of days so, how rude so yeah you can connect to the signal with your with the app the Iridium Go app and uh, and make calls multiple people through their phone so I've got a pretty clear line of sight here so I think I'm going to just lay it out on the ground here going to turn on my Wi-Fi. So I'm just going to select a square around the area I want. It's predicting the wind. Pretty good freaking service, I gotta say. Yeah, it shows it as a full signal. It's calling. Hello? Hi, honey. Bunches. Bunches of love. I love you. Eskimo kiss. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? It's really good. Are you on an Iridium Go? Yeah, Ted uh, got it from the satellite phone store. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. So this is a, a little receiver that I can tether to my phone and essentially make my smartphone a satellite phone. How is Wesley? Oh my God, he's being so cute right now. Aww. <laughs> How are you feeling uh, pregnancy-wise? Oh, it's hard. I'm getting so big. I bet. You're going to be a lot bigger when I get back. I will. Okay. Well. How's it going? Yeah, it's going good. Weather's pretty good. We paddled for 12 hours yesterday. We're absolutely exhausted. But uh, we're just getting camp packed up. and We're going to be on the water pretty soon, hopefully. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love you. Okay. I love you too. I'll let you go. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. How much you want? that a quick stir. There we go. Order paddles. So versatile. When you stir it with a paddle, it has a more I don't know, intricate flavor, I guess the word is. Intricate? Yeah. So the wind is picking up. As predict wind shows that it would. I wonder what wind picks up. didn't say it was going to get like... Does it pick up female wind? Does male wind is there sexes and maybe their gender binary or even long? So picking up. Is all right. Sorry, Jim. I don't care.
the lake, I think. by the way. It wasn't. I thought we were going across. I said we were just going to follow this side. Well, but then we're going to have to cross this huge bay over here. Well, we can still go left. Are you, I, I don't think it's safe to cross here right now. Okay, well, this is the safest place to cross. So either we, if we cross where it's more narrow, it's going to be, no, you're cutting me off. The crosswords are more narrow, the waves are going to be bigger. It's like another kilometer down. Okay, alright, let's just do it. That's what I'm saying, dude. Stupid decision. Should stay left. Well, we're already going. Yeah, so then we wait on the point till the wind dies or we catamaran before the crossing. You know? Well, the paddling on the right is just a point. I'll try to kind of beeline across, let the waves hit me on the side, and then turn and go with them until I hit a point. Sure. Then we'll be on the left officially. What it gets dangerous is uh, if a white cap breaks under your boat, it's essentially the same thing as being stuck in a hole in a rapid. Yeah, maybe he had a bit right. I will! I'm gonna go straight and then blow towards that point. They're getting pretty big. <sighs> because there's a point down this way. So if I was to tip now, I could probably swim to shore before I get hypothermia and my boat would blow with the wind into that shore. One of the things you gotta worry about where for a crossing is the wind and which way the wind is gonna blow your canoe after you swim to shore because it's too heavy to drag to shore, especially in cold water. I'm gonna turn and go with the wind. See right here, we're out of the death zone. Because we could swim to shore before we froze and our canoe would blow in. What the problem was is where we camped made us have to decide to make a decent sized crossing. And you just keep paddling hard, you know? We could catamaran right here, bro. Look, this is perfect. Just picked up again too, eh, the wind? Oh, it's because um, we're, it doesn't seem like it. 
but you're blocked by that point we went behind all the way till it like right. ends here. Right. So after. Uh, so Ted and I just uh, took refuge in a little sheltered bay on this rocky point here after making a scary crossing tucking into a bay where the waves were a little smaller was the wind was partially blocked and surfing across that bay with a tailwind and then cutting here in some quartering waves having to brace a couple times getting a little sketchy um, so we definitely can't fish in this and although we're making phenomenal time uh, we don't know whether we should keep going we have kind of have the option to hug some bays which will increase our overall distance but probably where we can use the wind to our advantage um, it might actually you know be about the same because uh, that tailwind will be pushing us although it's more dangerous and we can't fish so we're kind of debating maybe we build a catamaran or maybe we keep going and making time a catamaran is where you just take your two canoes and you basically lash them together side by side by tying logs across the thwart, so two logs, and then tying it underneath the hulls and tightening with a trucker's hitch. And uh, yeah, that will uh, really hold them together securely. And we can basically paddle in this and be very stable. You can still swamp, so we leave the spray decks on, keep a baler handy, and uh, maybe even sail. I'm sure we'd make some distance, and that way we could fish too, so. But it's time consuming to make, so I think we're probably gonna do it. I don't know. But look at these waves. It's hard to capture waves with a camera through a long lens. This is potentially one of the most dangerous things you could run into on this trip. I mean, the white water is very dangerous too, but being out on such a big, cold body of water uh, is is arguably much more dangerous if you do tip so we've decided to rig a catamaran the first thing you want to do when you have a catamaran is get your boat shored up side by side Ready? Yeah. you don't want too tight of a space in the middle because a wave will build in the middle that can actually get over the gunnels and get some water into your canoe um, we're, we're working in a tight spot here so we're having to put them a little closer together than, what, than we want to. In a way that'll be good because there'll be less strain on the cross piece logs that we use. But uh, the way we're going to counter that is we're going to point the bows in a little bit and that'll sort of uh, plow the water more and prevent that wave from growing in the middle. So um, to get them level and even, Ted's just gone and grabbed some dead logs and shoved them under my, uh, my canoe just to shimmy it up a little and be level with the other one. And uh, we don't have um, uh, stern thwarts in this canoe, in these canoes, because they're solar canoes. We just have bow thwarts, middle thwarts, the carrying yoke. But we do have a grab handle, which is very small, which is a thwart in of itself. So to make this strong enough, because we have to tie those uh, cross pieces across the thwarts, we're gonna have to use the grab handles and do three pieces. Hopefully we can get a bit of a smaller log for that. Um, to just reduce weight because even though you know woods buoyant there is more weight on the canoes Which will put them lower in the water and be more likely to swamp in the waves So I think we're about ready to go saw some uh, some trees down and uh, you know straight as possible and um, Lash these logs probably by the time we're done the wind will be dead in fact in my experience that happens often I think the winds just scared of catamarans terrifies it Ideally, we don't need to take live trees. We're going to get something that's uh, not totally brittle and dry. So we are windbound and we're hoping this can save us, but we might not even be able to paddle in a catamaran because you can still swamp in a cat um, if it gets any bigger. Or if it comes apart, then you're in real danger. Yeah, the more stormy it is, right, the bigger, uh, the more stress is on the catamaran too. So even if you won't dump or swine, you can prevent swamping, you know, a catamaran can split apart. But this isn't our first time doing this. It's like our fourth. So we've paddled some pretty big before. Anyways, I'm just using this uh, kayak paddle here to measure out the uh, 
uh, length of the log that we're using and just going to cut it to size here in the bush before dragging it out and laying it across the pour for us. Watch the paddles. So I size that one for the middle here. I brought this extra rope just for this exact reason. So Jim's just notching. The cross pieces here. For our rope. just tied the bows together and that's going to keep the whole thing contained and just add more rigidity to the whole structure because there'll be less pressure on the logs if the bows are trying to separate when we're hitting waves so key thing to do there and we have the cat rigged and if you ask me it's a cat's ass now we just got to figure out how to launch this thing well, so much for the wind dying down. that rock and I'll push it over to you. It's all 
So one of the things Ted and I debated about was whether we should put a sail on but the problem is we're heading this way and the wind is going this way so it's quarter quartering us from our uh, port stern and really without more sophisticated equipment or knowledge I guess about sailing which we don't really have you really need a tailwind and this is not a tailwind so we're gonna have to almost be fighting against where the wind's gonna blow us so we decided not to use a sail the wind's still going to be helping us get there though um but we'll see if things change or if we if we get out there and we feel we could use a sail we might just rig like a crude sail with a couple of paddles and like a, a contractor's bag over top of it or uh, one of my tarps or something like that uh if we think it's gonna help but the wind is so strong it actually you know could potentially blow us off course right now um, with the direction the winds going so yeah so that's where we're headed that point in the distance and then once we get there we skip to another point and we keep going crossing huge bays Let's jump in and start paddling yeah, for the guys, love of God. cameras aren't getting both of us. Turn your camera so it gets me and you. That's good. It, it should be on the outside and then we'll get us both. That's fine. We got one on the outside. Uh -huh. Inside, outside, surf and safari. All right. We are ready to rock and or roll. Six o'clock. 3.50. Oh it's hot out here, eh? Yeah. Fuck. Everything is so tedious. Let me put my sunnies on. We're all just wrapped up in my own bolt. Working. Well, we maybe both of us J stroke, okay? Right. You want a J stroke? I'll J stroke. Like I can't stop doing it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're so used to paddling steering, we can't even not J stroke. Yeah, this rig is absolutely rock solid, eh? Yeah. We're not taking in any water. Right. Yeah. Yeah! I don't see any flexing or anything. No. Well, we're definitely making it somewhere, man. You know? Shore over there. If you so, dump and you're a mile from shore, you're going to die. Some of these waves are pretty big out here. Look at the size of this lake. This is also why bringing two canoes helps a lot. Jim and I considered tandem paddling in a single canoe, like a 17 foot tandem canoe, but we never could have paddled today if yeah. we had done that. So it is, it does add a safety factor, that's for sure. In the back. fast we're going 2.1 miles an hour miles yeah we're not even paddling. it's more like five kilometers an hour i would say i don't know any kilometer i thought i set it to kilometers Saddle. some big waves coming in here Getting big enough to uh, swamp the catamaran. 
seems in our favor right now that we have this. This is so cool though, eh? Like these are not an issue now. Well, the waves have started to die down. Still pretty gusty. Still, um, still like too dangerous to paddle with a single canoe. Even though it was a bit of a side wind, it was still, the waves were pushing us in the direction we wanted. So there was a bit of fear going across the one massive section uh, because like the swells got really huge, but like honestly, um, it was no problem at all. Like we could have, we could have handled a lot Barely more. Took in any water. Yeah, we took a few splashes over the side, some up under, uh, but you know, nothing that that was really. It, it wasn't like consistently happening constantly, or we didn't have to bail. So you know, we took a chance, and it was definitely worth it. We just rounded a point here. The wind's been quartering us. Now we're turning in. It looks whoa. like we're gonna have a whoa. <laughs> waves are gonna be bigger, right? Yeah. Because the island is not blocking. blocking. But anyways, yeah, it looks like we're gonna have a tailwind here. We still really, really want to catch a fish. And uh, we're feeling like, you know, kind of like a couple of losers that we haven't. It's like a flat lining. We're both flat lining right now. We've tried four ounce keel sinkers. We've tried uh, wally divers. Tail dancers, yeah. you like know, deep diving minnow split loop. shots, yeah. five of diamonds, William wobblers, rappella jointed, rappella swimmers, cotton cordels, wally stingers. Wally stingers. We threw some more metal at them with the Agley, a long mess, number three and number two silvers. I got yeah. a Cleo on. Like, what do you want? Yeah. What do you, oh, we even. We even uh, uh, were using some tube jigs, like, you know, we had some super heavy weight and we, uh, as we paddled across there, we just put a tube jig on thinking the waves would kind of jig us across because we're going slow. Yeah, monster white tube jig. Yeah. Perfect. But what else are we going to do besides dynamiting these things? <laughs> and that is where we're going. That island in the distance. We are right out in the middle of this massive lake. This is pretty cool. 120 long kilometer lake, no road access, one flying only lodge somewhere, no boats. Basically me and Ted have this entire lake to ourselves. That is wilderness. We don't see anybody out here. Amazing. We still have a good tailwind. Um, so we considered rigging up a sail, but we thought, well, we only have like 10K more to go today. By the time we rigged the sail up and started sailing, we would have just paddled and blown there naturally anyway. So we, unfortunately, the wind wasn't a pure tailwind till long enough in the day. But yeah, waves has died down. We, we were considering, well, would it be faster to take the catamaran apart? But then we realized we had this huge open water crossing still, and there's still some white caps out here. So really good idea that we uh, kept the catamaran together. We're probably gonna leave it together until tomorrow morning because we wouldn't want to uh, disassemble it and then realize tomorrow we had to put it back together. So anyways, yeah, just putting miles behind us here. Long way to paddle still, but we're closing in on our destination. Ted's got a fish on. Oh, it's heavy, bro. Whoa. It's heavy. You want my, hold on. Oh, keep, keep it on. Keep it on. Keep it on. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Easy, easy. Still pretty deep, dude. Oh. oh. What happened? My line broke. What? Oh, god damn it, My dude. My drag was too tight. Man. Oh, that sucks. Oh, 
Oh no, Ted. Your line broke? I told you your drag was too tight earlier today. <sighs> it wasn't that tight. Look, pull it. Yeah, but when you pull it from the other end, it's, it's way tighter. When you pull it from there, it doesn't seem tight. God damn it, man. That was a tank, though, that eh? That was huge, dude. Fuck, what were you using? Cleo. <sighs> Four clamps. Look at how twisted my line is, though. Maybe that's why. Probably, yeah. Uh... Look at it. Yeah. It was twisting my line. It was just, yeah. Sorry. Oh. Dude, that was huge. What was that, like a 20 pounder or something? I think so. Sorry, Jim. I just, I blew it. Yeah, it was bad. It's all right. I blew it. Whatever. Shit had happened, so you'd probably would have blown it too, you know? It's not your fault, really. I should have brought it around this side, but I wanted to bring it to the net over there. Yeah. I'm so sad right now. <laughs> Uh, hey, that would have been amazing, right, to end the day, right before camp. Finally pulling up at camp, beautiful beach. There's actually a couple picnic tables here, I think, through the lodges. 